I'm very much struggling to see how these are gonna be functional offices. We've got less than a month until we have to be out of our old studio. We have to take all of our gear out of there and put it into this dusty old warehouse and hope it doesn't get ruined. This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 32,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. This is Evil Empire, which will one day be a shared co-working studio where people can have offices or hot desks. Kind of like a co-working space, but specifically for filmmakers. When, uh, when Evil Empire Inc. IPOs for $400 billion, yeah. I'm going to look back on this moment and be like, I was once sweeping the floor. <laughs> but right now, it's just a big empty warehouse with no power, no water, nothing. I guess we can just like go back to what sparked the move here. We got evicted, so. Yeah, this... Finding out all of a sudden that we were getting kicked out after having been there for five years was a bit of a shock. I try not to dwell too much on it because ultimately I think being here and like doing what we're doing now will be so much better for us as professionals, as creatives, as friends. But yeah, yeah, that really sucked. Real estate is just like mental right now. And so finding a place that worked for all of us was really, really tricky. All the spaces we saw were like just concrete boxes. And so we're like, hey, we have a concrete box. Why don't we put some metal boxes in it and uh, build out from there? Christoph, I think, brought up the idea first of putting shipping containers in here. And I was reluctant because I had videos that I needed to make. But more than that, I don't know how to do this kind of stuff. I've used a drill. The idea for the containers kind of became the most realistic idea because they're modular, they're easy to move around. And then whenever we do actually start the big construction process, we can move them to another part of the building or we can move them out of here. You know, we're not undoing all of this work that we put into it. So it was kind of like a good two to three year temporary solution. Did we order six? We ordered six used empty shipping containers. Yeah, this is gonna be a huge waste of money. A learning experience, if nothing else. A lot of times when I have ideas like this, I don't really think about the logistics of how it's all gonna work. I'm just like, oh, we have a big garage opening. I'm assuming they can stick something that's slightly smaller than said garage opening and get it in. Luckily, I didn't have to think about it too much. We found a company that not only delivered the containers to the location, but they, for a little bit of extra money, offered a service where they would actually bring them in. And then this guy basically, with these heavy machines that he could barely fit in through the door, dragged them around, like literally just pushed them around on the concrete till they were kind of roughly where we wanted them to be. And I had this big plan of having like a fire pole going from one down into another one. In the end, they said, we can stack it for you, but there's like a $4,000 fee to bring this crane in here. So right away, we're like, nah, what about it? just put them down. The last of the six bins that are getting installed right now. Kristoff is currently uh, climbing and jumping. Good work! Dave is over there filming. It's finally coming together. This is wild. Whoa, okay, this is, this is actually happening now. We actually have to do this. So I'm gonna figure out how to build a ship a container office. <laughs> Jesse. Hello, David. Where the hell are we now? Oh my gosh. Well, we're back in the sea can where we live, apparently. These two shipping containers here are mine, and the plan right now is to turn this one into the office for Dave and I, and this one I'm mostly gonna leave as is and turn that into like a 
storage slash workshop DIY space. But because I haven't yet started cutting any of the holes for the doors and windows, I do have an opportunity to reconsider layouts and which space does what. So I don't, I'm honestly a, a little bit stressed. What are we gonna do with it? Which one's the office? Which one's the container? And I figured that the best way to figure that out actually would be to go window shopping. Excited, um, terrified, anxious, excited again. Another part excited. It's it's weird being in this place because I have honestly no idea how to how to build all this. This is not my skill set. Today's video was helped made possible by the professional photographers of America. Whether you're just getting started with your photography business or you've been at this for a long time and are trying to take it to the next level. PPA is a fantastic resource for you to check out. PPA offers you up to $15,000 in equipment insurance, and on top of that, you only pay a flat $350 deductible for full replacement. Or, if you're just looking to get that equipment repaired instead of replaced, they'll do that for you at a flat $50 deductible. On top of that extremely important insurance, they also have all sorts of resources that are so helpful for us creatives that are trying to run a business. And that's things like model release forms or client contract. Heck, you even get access to their data recovery services. And some of these things, hopefully you'll never need, but should that occasion arise, you will be so, so thankful that you have it. If you're interested in finding out more and even getting a special offer on that membership, click the link down in the description to, to do that, to do the thing you wanted to do. Click the link. Thank you so much. PPA, everyone watching, mom and all my friends. I bet all my friends didn't watch this. That's a motorcycle, hold on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, most daunting thing is like, okay, we have to cut through steel, but corrugated steel, which is gonna be interesting. I, I've i never used an angle grinder, so uh, this is gonna be a learning curve for sure. I talked to Levi Allen, who's like a friend of ours who's done shipping container stuff in the past, and he kind of gave us this advice on how to cut it by scoring along the line over and over again and not just plunging it. He gave us a lot of good advice, which I think in the end saved us a ton of time and money. Christoph cut the first hole in his container, so Christoph knows what he's doing. But the first time I grabbed an angle grinder, I was like, won't these sparks burn my face off? I did it! Well, let's do it. All right, I've done my part.
Jesse, how do you take the safety off? I feel like this next week or two is gonna be absolute insanity, both with videos I need to make and shoot and learning how to actually do all this because in two weeks, this will be the space that I have to shoot and edit from every day. And I'm not even remotely close to ready for that. Ay caramba. That was super fun. It was like really stressful at first because my power tool experience is next to none. So now I am learning how to angle grind through corrugated steel. It's not even just flat sheets of steel, which is not easy, especially when you get near the end and the metal wants to pinch back together when you're angle grinding. There's sparks flying at you and you're not wearing leather gloves, so you just keep burning through gloves. Say that again for sound. This is uh, probably- Angle grinding the roof is is interesting because the roof likes to bounce up and down like a trampoline a little bit. I find I'm most comfortable if I'm like kind of straddling, which I'm sure any construction person would say don't do that. So the sparks are going right up my crotch. I burned through one pair of pants already uh, and one pair of gloves. So not safe. Josh cut most of the holes in our shipping container. He cut the big one for our door and he cut one and a half of the skylights. And then he messaged me and he was like, hey, uh, I just, I figured you'd probably want to try doing this angle grinding. And so I just left like half a skylight for you. And I was like, thanks bestie. And, uh, and then I got here to do it. And I was like, this We haven't seen each other. Brandon has a baby due like in the next few weeks. So he's been running around trying to get that all sorted. Do you want to know what's going on? Like how that happened? Is that your? <laughs> How, yeah, that's what we're getting. How our babies of. made. How do we... Are we going to be done enough for the move out? It's going to be close. I'm optimistic. I mean, worst case scenario, we'll just move into whatever is here, but I'm really hoping that we can have things relatively finished before we move out. Uh, I think Kristoff will be ready in time. Yeah. I'm really doubting that we'll be ready in time. cut the, the door like an inch short, which is really unfortunate. Like the door would fit, but the frame doesn't fit. So now uh, we're gonna have to cut. And I didn't want to cut. Cut. I was really hoping we'd be able to have the door installed because at least then, you know, we can seal it off from dust and stuff. But I don't think it's gonna be possible. Alright, that's it. I am driving the last U-Haul load of stuff out of our studio and we gave the keys back. We are officially moved out of this very terrible building. Look at this is our first day in the space. We've officially moved in. Our uh, spaces are not even close to ready. I almost fell through my skylight over there and uh, I'm feeling great. Feeling fantastic. No, but seriously, this was a monster of an edit to put together. Christoph's also on his phone. There was so much I wanted to include in this video that I just couldn't for the sake of time. A lot of that is coming in future videos where we talk about the specifics of material choices, design layouts, and a whole, whole lot more. So thanks for watching. I think you're great. I think, I think we're, I think this is good.